Cool. Ansgar did a great job of introducing Saturn. And we see Saturn as a way how to cross an adoption, adoption chasm to allow more people to join the Web3 as users. But it's only the first step. And the second step is how to allow these users to contribute their resources or to participate in the Web3 economy. So they are not only consumers, but actually actively participants. And uh, the opportunity here is great, because if you, if you look at the current computing land landscape, we have about 3 million servers running in data centers of AWS, which would be the L1 nodes or the Web2 technology running out there. But now compare this to the number of Raspberry Pis sold in the last year alone. That's 10 times more. And it's still nothing compared to the amount of personal computers sold. So we have a hundreds of millions of PCs running out there and not being used to their full potential. For example, a typical user doesn't use much of their CPU power. The CPU is just sitting there idle. And even power users like people of writing code or editing videos, they are not doing this 24 hours a day, right? And similarly, the uh, internet connection bandwidth is not being utilized. Even if you are watching videos, we don't saturate it by 100%. So there is another opportunity which we can leverage. And now the question is how we can put all these idle resources to work for us. And our answer to the question is Filecoin Station. And uh, Filecoin Station is a desktop app that anybody can install on their computer, like your parents or your friends. And this application will contribute your spare resources, be it CPU, disk storage, internet connectivity bandwidth, to the Filecoin network and reward you with Filecoins back so that you are incentivized to run it more. If we look at this from a technical point of view, we want to allow people to run untrusted code, do some useful work on untrusted computers, and we want to pay for this, which makes it very tricky. But it's a big, big dream, right? Because once we build this technology, it can allow us to do plenty of amazing things. We can run distributed computation to accelerate, uh, I don't know, research of cancer treatments, whatever. We can pay Saturn L2 nodes to actually provide content to the network to accelerate retrievals. And we can also uh, check whether the network of peer-to-peer -peer nodes is actually behaving as it should, whether the nodes are up, whether they are doing what they are uh, supposed to do. And we can also do uh, pretty good measurement of network performance from real computers running in real home networks, as opposed to just running some simulations in data centers. So that's all cool, but where are we now? Saturn L2 launched. We, the station, are still in alpha. You can download the app, give it a try. You will be running Saturn module, the L2 node, already in your application. It will be connected to Saturn testnet. It will start receiving tr real traffic. And there are no Filecoin earnings yet. That's something we are working on. And we are iterating on the user experience to make this application as easy to use for consumer-grade users as possible. And very importantly, we are looking for ideas of what other modules we can run. So imagine you have hundreds of millions of stations running out there. What would you like to run on these stations? And let me do a quick demo of what the station looks like right now. So. Nothing happens, right? We want the station to run in background to be very inobtrusive, so we don't even notice that it's running. It's just this icon here, which I need to change to white soon. And when you open the UI, we are keeping everything minimal, just the total number of jobs completed, and hopefully the number, oh, it goes up, right? So I'm connected to the Saturn network, I'm serving retrievals, and that's the jobs I'm handling in my station. Soon we will add earnings, the Filecoin, to reward you for running the station and a nice look what's happening in the Saturn. So that station right now. And what's next? Next, we would like to build, oh, this is the demo time. Next, we would like to uh, do a public beta where we would have a built-in Filecoin wallet to make it even easier for people who are not familiar with crypto to actually start earning Filecoin. So the wallet will be provided for them. We will have Saturn module connected to the mainnet serving real requests from the C for the CDN, and we will be uh, paying out Filecoin earnings. Okay, that was like the introduction, and now what the station, how does it look like under the hood? Technically, station is composed of the station itself and then one or more modules. You can think about this as of, a, of the International Space Station. You have some infrastructure and then you have different modules connected to the frame. So you would have a habitat model where people are living. You can have a scientific lab where you do the experiments 
another module to recycle water and air. And similarly, we are building station. The station component is providing the integration with the operating system, UI, all the things which you don't want to build for your module. You want the station to take care of it. And then a module can be anything that can run jobs on the computer, preferably not using all resources because then people will just shut it down. And it needs to pay rewards in Filecoin. If you would like to build a module, come to talk to us. It's super easy. You just write any, or you just give us any binary. It can be a Go binary, a Rust binary. Probably Node.js would work as well. Station will configure you using environment variables. This is the well-known 12-factor app approach. And the communication is over STD out and HTTP. Very easy. And the important thing to mention here is that we support only trusted modules right now. We trust you as the module author that you are not going to do something malicious like stealing SSH keys or similar stuff. And which probably makes you think, why are we doing it this way? There is no support for untrusted code. We are using Electron. Oh, not wrong. And the reason is you want to ship quickly and iterate fast and get user feedback and find out whether this is actually the right way to take. And yeah, that's it. Thank you, Ansgar, for the approach. Cool. OK. And going more longer term, we are already researching ways how to actually make our dream come true and build a runtime that will isolate individual modules so that we are sure they are not going to do any harm, so that you can trust this application and you can install it on your parents' computer. And uh, we also want to enforce limits on resource co consumption so that even if your module is not aware of limitations, we will make sure it's not using too much of computer's resources. And the way how to implement this, there are different approaches. We were looking into containerization or uh, virtualization, but unfortunately, that doesn't work. One, not all computer -grade computer, uh, sorry, consumer grade computers support virtualization. And what's even worse, Windows Home Edition doesn't support virtualization at all. There are no APIs for that. So we decided to take the path of Isolates, which is a technology used by Chromium browser to isolate your, isolate your tabs. It's used by uh, Cloudflare workers on the server. And the idea is to build a station runtime, maybe using FVM or IPVM or similar technology, which will provide runtime to run your JavaScript or WebAssembly code. It will sandbox your code to make sure you can access only safe subset of resources. We can do resource limiting and give you platform APIs, maybe access to file system and web sockets, oh, sorry, network sockets, maybe something more higher level like a like an API to fetch a CID from anywhere it can be in the network. And on, on top of this, it will be super easy to build station modules. Except there is the third part, which I haven't mentioned before yet, and that's how do we schedule jobs? How do we prove that the job actually has been executed correctly, that the station is not cheating? Because remember, it's running on a trusted computer and it's open source, so anybody can modify it. And then how do we handle billing and paying payouts? So that's still an open question to research. And that's almost it. If you like, please go ahead and download the application using the QR code or filecoin-station.app. And if you have any ideas what would be a good module to be run as part of the station, then please let us know. You can join us uh, on the Filecoin Slack in filecoin-station channel or <clears throat> follow us on Twitter, Filecoin Station. Thank you. And any questions? Yeah, go ahead. So if I'm a casual user on, mm -hmm. on this one, uh, is the data that passes through or into my computer uh, fully encrypted so that I couldn't be incriminated for hosting state secrets? That's a great question. Or illegal content. Yes. Yeah, That's so something we need to sort out. Like, who is liable? Yeah. Is it PL for running the station? Is it you? I because would love to help the, the next Edward Snowden. I just don't want to go to jail for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a great question, and I don't have the answer yet but we are definitely aware of this issue. Yeah. So uh, the first... Um... What, what we heard here seems like it's uh, oriented against, uh, like you can run it on your desktop or your laptop or whatever you have yeah. as spare resources. Would this also be considered because it starts to look a little bit like an alternative to uh, Bacchial? like computer mm -hmm. data, like another way around it, where you're basically using the cache data, which actually works, compared to Filecoin data, which is uh, sealed. 
Um, so I was just wondering if uh, this could also turn into something that would running on like servers and stuff like that, or is it only meant for really tiny devices? Okay, so one idea we are considering is to add Bacalao into station so that maybe the content that's being cached by uh, Saturn L2 module can be directly used by Bacalao to do compute over data, maybe even as part of the CDN so we can resize images or maybe do video transcoding, something like that. So that's one area, but you were asking about servers. And uh, I think that leads to a headless mode so we can run station as a server daemon somewhere and then maybe have a way how to control it from UI. That's something we are thinking about as well. Okay, cool. The question would be what would be the requirements on the hardware on such server? I would say those requirements would be much, much lower than we have for L1 nodes. So even if you have maybe a spare Raspberry Pi in your home, then maybe you can run station on it. But that's farther in the future. We want to start with targeting uh, like consumer users with their laptops, and then the next step would be headless mode. Does it answer your question? Yeah, it does. It's, it's just a matter of what you're solving here, including building, having a wallet, uh, getting mm -hmm. all that worked out. It's like that is also usable for bigger resources if you can actually create a, a, a network of servers mm -hmm. that has cache data available and can yes. actually compute on it because you have Bacalao on top of it or whatever. Yes, exactly. It's like if you solve that, it's like it has bigger application, I guess, than just your Raspberry Pi. Yeah, you are right. I've got a couple shorter questions first. Um, uh, have you figured out uh, incentive model already for, uh, for, for this as well, or is that still being worked on? Uh, it's something we are working on. Initially, we were thinking about using similar model as we would have for L1s, mm -hmm. so basically monitoring the traffic, how much data you are serving from L2 to L1, how much value you are providing to the network, and then base rewards on this. But uh, now we are not so sure. So, gotcha. Okay. It's in the research. Yeah. My That's other why question. Yeah. We, perfect. We are not shipping yet. Definitely. Uh, other question was uh, how much system resource does it decide to use on small localized devices, and can you toggle that as a user? Uh, so, so there are two parts to this. One is that we want to actually actively limit resource usage. So, for example, to make sure we are using at most half of your free disk space or find a way how to keep network connection saturated only to maybe 30% to make sure you still have a good experience as a user. And then many of the, <clears throat> or specifically Saturn module doesn't need much CPU right now because it's just download some data from the internet, put it on your disk and then serve it back. So there isn't even this concern at all. 